Hi everyone! Welcome back to Studio Lou. It's Cindy. I have not filmed just kind of a regular video in a few days now because I've just been very busy this week. Um, but I have been working on books and things. So i am decided to start a journal. I've had kind of the idea in my head for a little while now. So I'm just going to share today with you, I guess, some steps in progressing toward that. Um, so this book is a beautiful old book. It's called So Little Time by John P. Markhand. So when I got this book, I thought, what does, you know, what, like, I don't know if you do this, if you're collecting books, you're picking up books for journal making, but I will often kind of go down the shelves looking for lovely books. And sometimes there's nothing particularly fetching about the book, although I do love this gold embossing on the front and I quite like these lines here. It was the title this time though I thought about so little time and you know you can think about that in a couple of ways like we have so little time to be here in this plane on this earth right and we have so little time as children and so it's that kind of thinking that got me thinking about wanting to make this into sort of a nature journal but it's like nature through the eyes of a child because I think we have so little time to experience that in itself, right? That very different way of going about life as you're growing up. Um, so that's what I've chosen to do. So this book is 1943. I have gathered um, the papers for the seven signatures here. So I'm planning to put some kind of like a a pocket here to kind of open this up and just start with these simple children drawn little trees. So the pages that I'm using in this are from a few different sources. So first I got these, um, <clears throat> they're like Italian children's books that teach you to draw and they had a lot of nature themes in them and the paper is really nice and they were from the 1950s so I grabbed them because I thought they were quite nice and then rather than using coffee dyed paper as like the primary or dyed paper i'm choosing to use this old children's writing paper because it goes with the theme so in the first signature i will be putting in the signature from the book that has the copyright information i'll be including richard scary pages um from one of my favorite books of richard scary and it's the things to know book and it has a lot of beautiful nature type images um i'm also including some beatrix potter folios we have to make a, a beak for this bird that that got lost i have kind of a fun idea to make like a long beak that might wrap around the corner <laughs> something cute like that um and then also some pages from this lovely book called the lonely squirrel that has incredibly lovely um, illustrations. I've used them in several different nature type themed books, but just look at those, aren't they pretty? Um, so yeah, that's the plan. And there's some other illustrations from children's books. There's some pages from the fishes, this fishes book I have, that's a really lovely book. But what my objective is, I think first today, a couple things is I want to make, um, I want to find, so you see this image here. I want to find just something that's representative of nature in some way, be it an animal or a little tree or something that will fit right here with this, but not completely hide it. Cause I don't want to put anything too big on the cover. I want it to be kind of modest and it's, its way of presenting itself, you know? And then um, I think over here, I might do something with a little square, something or other, just to cover the author name um, and then leave the rest of it alone. Cause it says little brown there. I, I don't know why it says that a little comma brown. I didn't look at um, what that is. I don't know. But I also have to decide which side I want to collage on if it's this side. I feel like I like this side, but I just like this so little time there. But anyways, I want to make a little collage journal card with this as well, this book plate. But I think first I'm going to go through a couple of my many old copies of Richard Scary books. I picked these books up. I mean, I stopped because I just, I do have several of them, but I do pick them up when thrifting, especially the older ones. Um, this one is French. 
just because I just quite love them. They're just really wonderful and the images inside these can be used for lots of different things. You'd be surprised how often you can use, you know, something like this. So I'm already here on this first page and I'm seeing a couple things that might work. This little bee and this little mouse. So we'll keep those in mind. <clears throat> but I think there's going to be something that's going to make me go, ah, that's the one. <laughs> you know, so like this little mess, definitely. I love his little hat popping off. I just love the illustration style of Richard Scary. We could also do a little bunny. Bunny. Super cute. This is one of my favorite images too, is this mother hen with all her little chicklets. <laughs> so cute. He just had such an incredible imagination. I also just really appreciate anybody who um, is able to think like this, like how animals could be used for different things, like in the same way that like the Flintstones used like that, you know, um, what are ancient elephants? What water? No. Um, before the elephant, there was another tusked animal. What am I thinking of? not a water buffalo i can't remember but regardless that animal mammoth mammoth i think um you know they used him as the the water hose in their sink like the tap in their sink so i always like when you see things like you know animals <laughs> having these multiple uses for things it's very cute okay so here's an unsuspectingly great thing right here that i think would be perfect for this book this little bunny with the rake. I think I'm going to go with it. I'm just going to follow my heart because, you know, I think there's a, a certain relationship that we have when we're children with the outdoors. There's always like the magic of the outdoors and going and at least for me, I grew up in a very small town and there weren't many other children that lived there um, really at all. It was more like a retirement um, kind of village um, of about 700 ish people in the, the larger area around our village and it's one of several little villages and towns that are on a little island and um, so when I was a kid all my friends were probably in their 70s and 80s <laughs> And so I spent lots and lots of time outside and at the library because there was not a whole lot to do. Like you would standardly think about things to do um, for kids. There wasn't like a, I mean, we had a park and there was a pond and an old mill, which was great. Um, but there wasn't like the kind of stuff that kids have nowadays, like community centers and stuff. <clears throat> so that being said, I spent loads of time outside and I think that our relationship with outdoors can be a lot of things. It can be like the adventure of going and I mean, I used to do things like don't cringe here, but I would follow the railroad tracks to the next town. We had an inactive um, train rail. Don't don't do this now, please, because trains are very different these days and the train rails are much more active than when I was a kid. but. Um, and where I lived, of course, <clears throat> it, it only, um, we had one inactive rail and another one that only really ran at night for the transport of like goods. So I would do that. I would like catch frogs at the pond, but then the other relationship with nature that I'm thinking about is when it wasn't so fun. Like when you had to help your parents do things like rake leaves and you had gotten past that age of like five or six where everything you're involved in is magical and it starts to become like, Oh, I don't want to do this. Oh yeah. He's going to be perfect. Look at him. <laughs> so, that's another kind of reference, right? To like so little time. You, we have so little time as parents to convince our children that, you know, chores are a good idea <laughs> um, so that they will help us with them. Because I know for me right now, my daughter, we, we ordered a, a couple, like I had been waiting on a couple for my husband's job um, of those trash picker upper things and then earth day was fast approaching so i just ordered a couple more on amazon but they were shorter ones for our kids so that we could take them on a trash bash for um earth day which we did so 
you know, right now she thinks it's the greatest thing in the world. In fact, yesterday I had to go to my office, um, my actual in-person office to do some presentation for a client and, um, well, she was behind my office building. There's a park there, like a walking track. And she was so excited to be back there cleaning up garbage with her little brother. So my husband was like sending me pictures. Sorry, I'm just ungunking my glue bottle here. It's really quite gunked. I need to get, I just ordered some stainless steel pins so that I will stop using these old um, pearl pins in these bottles because they're just, they're not ideal. They get rusty, you see, and so you get like rust and build up on your pin and in your glue, which doesn't really bother me except that it jams my bottle up a little more. Um, are we clear? No, we're not. We still have a jam. Um, so yeah, you know, you have so little time to kind of inspire stewardship of the planet and all that kind of stuff. Cause those things, I think they're built like a little early in life, right? Like you have to, um, get kids kind of understanding a few things that are important to you when I mean, they're quite young. So I'm just going to go over this with art glitter glue to glue it on just a little tiny amount, but everywhere. Um, and then I'll probably be sealing this cover as well. This reminds me very much of some of my first journals that I ever made. I did a whole series of Richard's scary books. I think all of them are gone now to their new homes. <laughs> okay, I really love him. <laughs> and I love that it's like a little asymmetrical, like it's gonna give a little character. Yes, he's so cute there, come on. <laughs> okay. Um, now we'll put something in over this maybe and I might just go back to Richard Scary again and see if I can find something else for there um, because why not hmm a little house could be quite cute you know because it's kind of a nice shape. This little chalet here could be cute. It's just ever so slightly too big, I think, though. I think most of these houses are too big. Maybe this one, the Maisonette. Um, so if we look at the width of the spine, and just this, that, that one could sort of just fit. I also quite like this one. Yeah, I think that one would be perfect, actually. The chalet is too wide. Um, I don't like the colors of the Maisonette as much. I like the, uh, this one. Let's give it a try. Okay. Sorry for that little snip. I, my husband visited me with coffee because he's lovely. Okay. So, I'm just going to try to go in without disrupting everything else. So tell me if after seeing this video, you want to go to your thrift store and look for Richard's scary book. <laughs> A Richard's scary book can make everything better. Trust me. So I've been so busy this week. I've had a, well, I've had a busy weekend. Um, of just going out and doing stuff. I was also just feeling very tired. I'm kind of delicately a woman. So, you know, you know, we go through these, um, these different phases throughout each month. Right. So yeah, I'm kind of a little sleepy and <laughs> 
Also, going to work yesterday, actually getting up and going to work. Like, what kind of first world problems is this, Cindy? But, um, yeah, it's it's real different when you haven't done it in a long time. And I was like, ugh, I was so tired yesterday. And also, just, like, after talking to people, I mean, I, I already get a little bit tired and worked up because... Um, I have these requirements to go to work, which is that, you know, we have windows open. I wear masks whenever I'm around. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Whenever I'm around a larger group of people or they're closer to me than, you know, my preferred 12 feet of distance. <laughs> so, um, and I'm the only one I think left in my office who's still feeling like they don't want to catch this, but you know what? I'm not going to feel guilty because, the last in-person meeting that we had at my office, one of my colleagues um, was positive. She tested positive the day after, which makes a lot of sense because she's actually married to a doctor who works at a local large hospital, actually with COVID patients. And they're very careful, but they have been infected um, at least twice that I'm aware of. And then, when, you know, the next day, and, and my, my manager was there, none of them had masks on, um, none of the clients had masks on, you know, everybody's doing their whole, everything's back to normal thing. And, um, yeah, so she got on the call, and she was not sounding so great, and I said, oh no, are you sick? You okay? And she's like, oh, so I gotta talk to you guys, I tested positive yesterday, I didn't have any symptoms, um, but for you, 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 and she kind of gave the the roll call of who had been in that meeting, you know, she was letting them know because thankfully people aren't weird about disclosure of that at, at my job, thankfully. Um, Cause I know that not everybody has that luxury that people are strange about staying quiet. So she had to tell everyone. And so, um, yeah, not fun. Okay. So that's in there now this, because it's on a curve, you'll see it's not quite down. So first of all, I'm just going to peel it up a little bit and I'm going to clip just a titch off the edge there. Just a titch. Nothing too major. I'm going to try to round it out again. Hold on. There we go. And I'll just add the glue back here. Now I'm going to seal this down. So it's going to mold it right down to the book, but that's better. I don't want it too, too close to like this line edge. This side I think is fine. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. It's rolling. The edge isn't rolling it, um, but that's better. You can see that it's down now completely. So we'll have this little house on the spine. So little time and we'll have this little raking bunny here. Yay. Okay. So now maybe I will make this journal card. So as much as this is cool, I want to use this side cause I want the title. Um, even though I have it in the book already, um, that's okay. So the first thing I want to do is just, I'll use this as kind of my guide for the size for this, this journal card. And then my, my daughter's just really busy in a lot of things. She's recently started doing um, a very fun nature school. Um, I'm just going to grab some nice old book paper to back this with. So she started nature school and she's really, really enjoying it. Um, we had a, a cookout last week with her nature school and that was fun. And um, then this week she last night she went to her beavers group and they learned about not tying and she got her swimming level one badge and they tied knots um like reef knots and all sorts of things one of the knots they tied it with licorice which i thought was really cute <laughs> so yeah she's having a great time with, with those kids Oh, these old papers being glued to other old papers. It's just divine, honestly. So nice. Okay. And then I think I'll leave just a little border of the other paper because I like the, the difference in those two shades of paper. Okay. 
So I think I'll try to find like a little person, like a little kid, maybe a Tim Holtz person or something here. Um, or one of my little people, we'll see. Let's pull this toward me. I've got a bunch of um, Tim Holtz people that are on top today because I just not long ago got a new pack of them. These ones are like sets. Oh, she's cute. Maybe. I think I want someone a little bit different though. Well, that's a maybe too. She's cute. Um, also could get like a little, there's a dog. Oh, she's okay. No, we want her. Okay. She's the one because two reasons. Number one, she has this branch of leaves under her arm. And number two, she has a little tiny book. And this honestly just reminds me of my childhood because all I really did was go to the library and outside. And maybe we'll add a dog here. Just looking at her like, hey, what's the plan? What, what are we doing next? So yeah, let's, um, cause yeah, that was me as a kid. I, I also had two beagle dogs, little guys, and they were my pals, and I would take them a lot of places with me. So this is also from the Richard Scary book, and I really love the, um, the dandelion seeds and the dandelion. So how to make this all go together is kind of the first step. So little time is okay. I can get that in there. So let's show you what I want to do here. Trim this down. Now I'm going to measure the words so little time right here. So this is just under two inches, right? It's about, let's see, let's say like one and three quarters. So, I'll tear this edge a little more regularly if I can. Not super regularly, but just so it does look torn. And then the same up here. Is that a straight edge? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yep. Okay. Then this can go to here, I think. I'll get rid of that. Mm -hmm. Pencil or pen or charcoal is fine, I guess. So, kind of just try to line up where the words are here. Um, I'll go right there maybe. Okay, so I'm just, I'm going to get behind the word and then here, and I'm just going to make kind of a, a line. Then we're going to go in, we're going to cut like a little, just a little snip in there. And then we're going to tear out just, you know, a little gingerly, be a little careful. This is nice quality paper, so I'm not too concerned about it, like, tearing in ways that are going to be really bad. Just tear the line out and try to make enough room for so little time. Okay, then I want to ink this and I think I'll go with my regular brown distress ink, my vintage photo. Lately I've been using a lot of different inks, but I don't know. I do come back to the tried and true kind of when I want to age something a little.
And then I'm just going to go on the in the inside here. I'll ink up this little spot that we tore. I'm trying not to go too heavily. Okay. Perfect. Now, just glue this on. It's using glue stick because this is just nice, like old paper to paper. We don't have to go too crazy with the glue, and I don't want anything too bulky. Just make sure we sort of center it with the page. Actually like that as it is. <laughs> now I'm going to add ink to this doll, these Tim Holtz paper dolls. They do take ink nicely. I used to think, oh, the ink will be gone because it's like a shiny surface. But no, once the, the Distress ink specifically, uh, also the the um, archival inks, they really do dry. They're not going to go anywhere. Um, I have journals that are several years old that I've done this with and like no change. I tend to be doing that from time to time. Like I've been keeping journaling kind of notes about things like I go back to journals that I've made in the past um, like a long time ago kind of and I look at things like different kinds of paper and you know did anything change about it when it aged I recently did um, a tutorial and a recipe card for cabbage dyeing paper for my patreons and I was able to go back and reference like paper that I've made years ago and also I mean I, I've studied the science with a lot of this from my work with dyeing um, in the fiber arts and I and I know about a decent amount about dyeing this is going to be a sneeze excuse me and there we go they always come in threes um, so yeah I, I do know a decent amount about dyeing like um so I was able to put that together and take some notes even from some old journals so it was good okay so there's our girl now before I put our dog on I did also think I wanted to put maybe some of this dandelion on hmm Let me just see. behind her. No, I don't like the edge. Uh-uh. I think I will look for maybe, um, a fussy cut flower. What do I have here? I know I have, check my ephemera book first, and if not, I know I have like eight million botanical books that I can go and play with, but yeah, I want to look at this. Let's pull my chunky monkey out here. Ephemera book three of three. I have so much ephemera right now. Okay, let me grab. Here's one. Hold on a minute. Sorry, I can't tip this book to show it to you. That's roses. Um, we have frames. We have a little house. This may be too big, but we'll check. Hold on. Let's just see here. 
Another thing I could do is I could put this up here. So that could go like that and be kind of like a, like a, bow, a bow. Is that the name? A bow? Bow? Um, I do like this, but I just think it's big and it takes away. And I wouldn't want to use just the small bit. I do want to use it, though. It has the most weak stem ever. I like that, though. I just think that would be cute. Little dog friend, though. Hmm. I'm going to put this delicate flower away now. <laughs> there we go. Plunk you back from where you came from. should make a specimen card or something and use that up. Um... We have a mushroom. Sh mushroom. We have a bunch of them actually. So how many are here? Two? Yeah, two. So that one. Hmm. Maybe, but then it feels kind of empty up here. Hmm. The collaging had felt so easy for a while there. I was like, I was spoiled. <laughs> Maybe a monarch butterfly. Oh, I hear little feet. My son is awake. A couple of butterflies, perhaps. Yeah, I like that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go with that. Um, oh, of course, I just found a whole bunch of flowers, too. That's okay. I'm going to be content with this. I think I, I like it, actually. So let's put this book back. Oh, this book is so fat right now. <laughs> Do you ever just find yourself going like, okay, I have so much stuff I need to work. That's me right now. Even though it's organized, it's just, it needs to get used. Okay. All right, that's ink and glue these all down. My daughter's doing another trash bash event with the beavers next week at a local park. I also took my daughter to go see the new Super Mario Brothers movie. Oh my goodness. It was fun. It was actually a ton of fun. I was surprised. I think I smiled the whole time. It was great. I, <laughs> I, um, I just went with her because my son's not old enough yet to um, endure such a long period of time in the theater. And we had so much fun. We, we got concessions. We got popcorn. We got, you know all cozy and it was a lot of fun. I thought the movie was well done. I think it was kind of cross-generational appealing. Here we go. And now our flutterbys. Day. We had the loveliest little thing happen in the graveyard where we walked. There's a little red fox that lives there, and we saw him so much. He was out. He was having a lovely day, and he was just out, like looking for field mice, and he was just hopping around and being really cute. I got a couple very sweet videos of him. He he seems to be quite unbothered when you're just sitting in your car. Like, I'm, I'm sure he's used to the traffic going through the graveyard, um, but like, you know, obviously, like, if you're not in your car, he's very skittish. He stays away. So thankfully, he's not being fed by people. That's always my worry, is that when you see wildlife consistently in one place, that people learn that, and they're like, ooh, 
and they start to take steps that they shouldn't. Um, but I know in my hometown, they've been posting pictures in like the Facebook kind of groups that I only kind of randomly follow because they spotted um, a lynx and that's pretty cool. Never seen one so far into where I used to live. Um, they're usually far more north, but yeah, it was kind of a cool thing. Okay, so we did a couple of things, and I've probably talked a lot. Um, also, I'm using this like old poetry book from my glue book right now, and I'm, I mean to go through it and grab things from it as I'm going, but. I'm not going to stress too much. So I haven't made a Tuesday 10 video in a couple weeks and I know it's it's been um, a minute since I did that but I'm going to go back to it. I actually need to probably make a few use it up ephemera type like videos because I have an absolute ton of papers that I've been storing from like the finishing of books and things and putting them in my Tuesday 10 pile. Um, it's, it's looking at me going, I'm going to explode. So I need to use it for sure. But I also have a ton of ephemera from Mass Make March and the ephemera that I made, it aligns with a few ideas that I have. So I just have to live in my balloon for a little while here and not add to it. So there will not be a thrifty Thursday video this week because I'm not thrifting <laughs> and behaving. Um, so yeah, that is our project for today. I may come back with another um, video or two on this book before we get it done. I'm hoping I will get this book done relatively soon for two reasons. One, it feels magical to me and I just want to work on it. And two, if I do, that means my week's not going to be too busy and I need that right now. But also, um, I have a lot of ephemera already made that I want to put in this book. It's good. The book was inspired by the title as well as by the fact that I have some perfect ephemera for it. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope some of this elicits some childhood memories for you or maybe your memories of parenting and what you do with your kids. And, you know, maybe if you have a nice day to go out and frolic in a meadow like a fox, you should do it because it's a lovely way to spend the day. So I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.